Hey, Chef D for At The Cottage with me, Chef D, where today we're taking you to Bracebridge. We're gonna be taking you to this really crazy place called the Hiram Street Market, where they have barista coffee, they have a bake shop, they have a deli, and also in the back, they have a cool wine bar. And we're gonna finish up at two landmarks, Griffin Gastro Pub, and of course, Inn at the Falls. Won't you join me? Hey, Chef D here. Welcome to At The Cottage with me, Chef D. I have a special guest, Rick Maloney, Mayor of Bracebridge. Hey, welcome back to the show. Well, I tell you, it's great to be back a second time, I tell you. I made the cut after the first one. <laughs> you did, you did. Um, Bracebridge, it's really cool. Like 1876, it started. You have the waterfall, and that's kind of how everybody got here. Lots of changes in, in Bracebridge again. Absolutely. You know, uh, as you pointed out, uh, in 2025, 2025, uh, Bracebridge will be celebrating its 150th anniversary. Yeah. So as an incorporated town. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it started off uh, as a, a community that uh, lived around the river. Um, logging, of course, uh, the natural resources around was uh, a big thing for Bracebridge. It also was a gateway for folks to come and enjoy uh, Muskoka in the early days with steamships. And we did have a steamship service that would come up all the way up the river and into uh, Bracebridge. Um, but, you know, take that uh, point of time, 150 yeah. <laughs> years ago and where we're at today, yeah. we are a growing community. Uh, you know, we, uh, the last census, uh, uh, just over 17,000 people in Bracebridge, uh, up from the last census of 16,000. So more and more people are coming into our community. Our downtown has been very resilient. And I tell you, the uh, we have a waiting list for folks that, uh, businesses that want to uh, occupy in the downtown. But again, just before we, we got on camera, kind of walked downtown just to see it. And, you know, has anything closed? No, it hasn't. If anything, it's busier downtown. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and then where we are today, this is really cool. Well, I tell you, <laughs> you know, this whole uh, end of, uh, of, of town uh, is um, really, we, we're, we're calling this our, our, our food district, if you want to call mm -hmm. it. And, and um, the building that we're in now is formerly, if folks remember Bracebridge, formerly uh, Muskoka Brewery in the early days. Uh, but now it uh, is home for a number of uh, food-based businesses. Uh, including uh, the space that we're in here, uh, restaurant space, there's uh, Hiram Street Market, a new uh, uh, food market, yeah. um, the uh, Big River uh, Bakery, oh, uh, I know. a, like a coffee all. barista who's given us a, I know. a coffee this morning. And great story, and, and we'll get him on in just a couple minutes, but um, what a great, great, you walk in and the smell of all that bread. Oh, absolutely. How do you, how do you not buy a lot? Yes, I will be buying lots. <laughs> I'll be walking out with a couple loaves <laughs> myself. Um, so role as mayor, I know you're the cheerleader of the town, you know, you kind of, there's a lot of other aspects of it, but what's your favorite part of being in politics? Well, it, you know, it's all about helping people, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there's so many great things that happen in our community, uh, but there's also a lot of folks that have challenges. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, if I can help somebody uh, or our council can, you know, uh, bring an initiative or an opportunity uh, to our community that, that makes the life of someone in our community a little bit easier, that continues to attract people to our town, that uh, uh, adds to the vibrancy of our community. You know, that's what it's all about. Um, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me back here. Thanks for having the team back here. We're gonna do some touring now. We're going to go around and, and see some of these great new places and hit, hit one of our old favorites. Well, you know, I, I can give you a short list of places to hit, but I'm sure that your nose will, <laughs> your nose will guide you to where you need to be. <laughs> Won't you join us? So we're here at Playa Cabana, brand spanking new, three weeks old. They have an amazing wine list. It's a really cool concept. April can tell you more about it, kind of Spanish and theme, Spanish themed dishes. Um, I was saw the short ribs there and I just went, hmm. Mm, yeah, yeah, we do short ribs really well. So this is actually Taberna. Yeah. Playa Cabana, Muskoka is the next door. Okay. Same owners, yeah. same business, but um, just slightly different concepts. Um, over there is definitely our wonderful Mexican restaurant. Yeah. It's collaborated with all the places in Toronto. There's multiple restaurants. And we just decided to kind of do a, like a, a different endeavor here. So definitely Spanish inspired. Um, yeah. We have some Spanish 
Spanish dishes, but we're kind of just trying to lean into the whole European atmosphere of food with wine and good friends and right. family and community. That's yeah. Right. And you have some amazing wines behind you. Yeah. Here. Like I'm looking at them and I'm going, you got it, got it, got it. Our Need head it? bartender shaman has been really putting yeah. a lot of work into into uh, this selection. And uh, we have a cocktail list yeah. of 16 different cocktails, lots of wine by the glass, by the bottle. Uh, you're going to be open from Tuesday to Saturday? Tuesday to Saturday. Right. We're just doing dinner service for now. We're hoping moving forward um, sooner than later that we'll be able to be open for lunch service. But uh, we just, you know, yeah. everything, every new restaurant is a work in progress. 100%. 100%. <laughs> hey, you're in Bracebridge. Check them out. Um, yeah, it's absolutely. It's going to be amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Great wine list, great food. We've already tried some cookies and they're to die for. Hey, this is an amazing store, Sean. Um, I just really love it, and this is really cool. How did this come about? Well, it kind of came about during COVID. We okay. originally just started with a food truck at Sully's, yeah. and then uh, that progressed into brick and mortar, and then we took about a year to get Sully's open, needed a kitchen, home base kind of deal, yep. and uh, took a year to get open, then we got open for COVID. Three, three months we're open for, doing really well. COVID hit. And then we just kind of, like everyone else, we're, we went on pause and we pretty much had to pivot like everyone else that were pivot, but yeah, that's exactly what we did. I, we did takeout for probably about, I'd say, a year and a half through okay. COVID. Yep. And that sustained. And while the guys were doing takeout, I built the bakery with Lauren, my partner. Yep. And then once the bakery was completed, we I walked down the stairs here and did and he the, went, did the butcher went, shop. And he went, I need a butcher shop. That's it. Right? Yeah. And everyone needs a butcher shop. hundred yeah, percent. Everybody needs a butcher shop. I love the different cuts that you have here. You have some roasts, you have some, again, the steaks. And we were talking off air, you know, more yeah. and more cottagers, more and more people, they want to have fast and easy, fast, you know? Fast and easy. People yeah. love skewered. Yeah. They, they, they want their burgers, skewered meat, anything that's kind of low maintenance. Yeah. You get in the winter months, that's when you get into the braising and whatnot. Yeah, 100%. But in the summertime, it's got to be quick. I know. You got to turn and burn in the summer. I know. You have sure. Asabuco here. Yeah. That's my favorite. That Me is too. such my yeah. favorite. And you, have beef, and you have beef tallow. We use yeah. beef tallow for all our frying and that. Absolutely. If, if you haven't ch checked it out, and I know we've talked about it many times, check out the beef tallow. Come in here, do some fries in it. You will never go back. You will mm -hmm. never go back. But you also do something cool. You call the mashup. Yeah, we do a mashup box. Because we're only, uh, you know, I think five days a week. We don't open seven days. So yep. it, it's, it's a lot. We don't have the staff. Yep. It's not a grocery store. So we put it all to bed on Saturday. Whatever we have left fresh yep. typically is what we freeze down and we build boxes out of that. And they're all different. They could have chicken bombs in them to spatch chickens and a bit of fish. We keep all the premium price on the middle meat, the yep. steaks, that price. Yep. But everything yep. else we, we give a cut on to give yep. everyone a deal. And, it's all top quality product, all good marinades. Yeah. People are really happy with those. I love it. Hey, brother, thanks yeah. for having me. Right now, Chef D. Thanks, bud. Big River Baking Company. Yes. Miranda, I am in my, I'm in my heavenly <laughs> zone here, you know? Um, so you started this about three, I know that the team started this about three years ago. Yes. Yep. We're just going into our third year. We just finished our second full year. Making everything, baking everything from scratch? Yes. This is amazing. Yeah. So you have a whole bunch of different varieties. Um, yes. You have some honey butter raisin bread. Yes. And you were telling me off air it that- It is. Right? It is a favorite. So honey butter raisin, um, we used to do it two days a week. Yep. Now we do it five days a week. Um, sells out every day. People like it for French toast. They like it for uh, bread pudding. Yes. They like it just slathered with butter. I know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so going to get some good butter. We have some butter hoss and that. Then of course you have your sourdough bread. You have your baguettes. You have a white yes. bread. You do a whole bunch of buns, croissants, yes. and a whole bunch um, more, right? We do cranberry brie is our absolute bestseller. Okay. Um, we do it Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. It sells out pretty much as quickly as we can bring it out uh -huh, of the oven. 100%. It doesn't take long. We usually have to put a limit on how many people can get because it's the most popular one. Hey, thanks for your time. I know you got to get back at it and uh, check them out. Big River Baking. I'm going to, I'm, okay, I'm going to get you working. I need two sourdough yes. and I'm going to take a honey <laughs> butter, okay? Okay. Okay, sounds Perfect. great. Barista Coffee. How did it come about, Chris? Uh, well, a friend of mine, uh, who is now my business partner, we were sitting around on a boring, uh, bland January day, okay. thinking about how we can come up with some sort of e-commerce side hustle, and mm -hmm. 
we settled on coffee because it just seemed like, you know, it seemed like a good product to, to sell. So you're here at the Harriman Street Market um, and you're selling your coffee here, but also customers can order this throughout the country, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, we still, we're still using that e-commerce model, but okay. we've, we've kind of morphed into a brick and mortar as well. Mm -hmm. So they can, and you have a really cool story on this. So they, you don't roast the coffee until they order the coffee, right? Yeah, it's a true roast to order method. So the coffee that is shipped is roasted that day. So it's gonna be as fresh as possible. It's a great cup of coffee, a little bit of bitterness to it, and it just tastes amazing. So check them out, Chris, and uh, thanks for having me. Thanks, sir. Hey, welcome back. We're at the Griffin Pub here, Gastro Pub, here in Bracebridge. And I'm here with Kayla, the manager. Kayla, welcome, welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks for the invite. Thanks for having us. This is really, I love how quaint this is. Like 28 seats or something? Yeah, about that. It's a small little pub. Okay, so you, you have lots of beer on tap and I see that you have some of my favorites, uh, Landshark and some Marlou Dark, uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, but you also said you change them up a fair bit. Yeah, so uh, we try to work locally as much mm -hmm. as possible um, within like local Ontario breweries. Obviously, there are a couple that kind of fit outside of that uh, category, but we love to give as much option as possible and support the small guys and showcase kind of the local uh, breweries that are around. Okay, lastly, before we start on the food, um, you do live music here how many nights a week? Uh, Wednesday to Saturday. Wednesday to Saturday, you're up here in Bracebridge, you gotta come and see some live music because we all love live music. And now these three that we're, we're having, these three dishes, and we're gonna get to them in just a second, are like mainstays, like these, these do not leave the menu. No, no, these are fan favorites of the pub, been around for yeah. many years, and just generally keep rolling over to uh, new menus. Okay, so let's start with this beautiful right here. What do we have here? Uh, so this is our Nashville fried chicken sandwich. Uh, I would say this is probably one of our number one best sellers. Um, buttermilk uh, soaked uh, chicken breast um, covered in about nine different um, spices that are endeared with our Cajun butter sauce. Deep fried to perfection, drizzled with our house-made uh, dill ranch sauce. Um, we paired it with our truffle frites, uh, just to give a little difference, one of our side options that we offer here. I'm not giving it back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't blame you. The truffle fries are so good. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> dill pickle. I love it. Dill pickle. Nice light bun, yes. you know. Oh, it really good. <laughs> Messy, just the way we like it. It is so good. That's going on number two. So right here we have our fall inspired risotto balls. So they are pumpkin, spiced pumpkin flavored. Uh, and they are served with our red pepper aioli and fried and okay. tango crusted. Very nice. Now, sometimes when you put like earthy spices in, it kind of over overtakes the dish. This is amazing. This is fantastic. I'm glad you enjoy it. Mm. So these are our cauliflower tacos. Okay. So again, roasted cauliflower, also deep fried, lathered in a sweet chili Thai sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our in-house made mango salsa, mm -hmm. uh, lettuce, pickled onion, drizzled in our sriracha crema. Uh, and we've served that to you today with just our house garden greens. I, I feel like a Guy Ferrari, you know, diners, diners, and dives. <laughs> you look a little similar, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This is really great. Mm. For those who know, I'm not the biggest cauliflower fan, but this is like, this is going in for a second bite. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having us. Uh, thanks to your staff for preparing I'm some great food. I'm glad you enjoy it. Hey, if you don't want to cook at the cottage, go out the Griffin Pub, Gastro Pub, here in Bracebridge. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, 
I'm going back to this sandwich because of the truffle fries. As much as my doctor says I should eat more cauliflower, I think the natural part is where I'm supposed to be. We're here at In at the Falls in Bracebridge, and I'm with Chef C, Chef Chris. Chef Chris, what are we going to be making here today? We're doing lamb bolognese, mm -hmm. our classic. A uh, little bit different take on what you'd normally have. We're trying to showcase local livestock. We do our in-house uh, cured teza, which mm -hmm. is like an Italian-style bacon, yep. a little less salt, not quite as cured as pancetta. So we're going to start with our heavier lipids. Mm -hmm. We choose uh, about half pork yep. to lamb. The and the pork's just giving it some more of the fat that the leanness of the lamb you're not going to get. Yeah, that's exactly it. A uh, little bit of the caraway kind of flavor falls over too. We try to stay mm -hmm. true to Italian flavors here. Mm -hmm. So there's some stuff you could chuck in here, but no pun intended. <laughs> but we're gonna... <laughs> oh, come on. That's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but uh, we're going to stay away from, from that. So we're okay. really trying to stay to simple, true Italian food here. So all I'm gonna do is render this down like you normally would for a bolognese. Okay. We start with comfy garlic oil, that's what we yep. use in-house. Mm -hmm. But we're, again, gonna try to utilize the uh, the fats in, okay, the, in the protein. So right now I'm just gonna render it down, break it apart, and I really okay. don't wanna move it too much, right? No. I wanna, yeah, you got it. I wanna get the fawn kind of developing there. Now, where did you do your training? I'm a bit of a hometown hero. Okay, I'm, I like that, I yeah, like that. I'm from this area originally. Yep. Um, I grew up cooking. Yep. Grew up cooking here a couple of different spots. Eventually, I really fell for it. So I yep. took off the Georgian and Barry there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good school. Great school. Yeah. You have to go to school if you want to become a chef. Check out Georgian. Check out any of the great community college, colleges. And then you work on your red seal and the apprentice book is really cool. Yep. So the next thing I'm going to add here is sofrito, yep. which is pretty much like your mirepoix, you know. 100%. Yeah, your base A onions. little bit finer. A lot finer, yeah. And that gets you all that, just a lot more uh, potential to develop color, really. Mm -hmm. Like it caramelizes quicker right. for you. So onions, carrots. Now, do you put celery in yours? I put celery in yep. it, yeah. A little bit different. Some people do trinity. They omit yep. the uh, carrot and do yep. red peppers, but... No, I, I, just, like, I like the carrot better. So I kind of add it, it in I, I gotta get in. Just, yeah, just, give it some love. Oh, and that's another thing we do with our sofrito. Yep. Speaking of garlic, there is a little bit of comfy garlic Yeah, you bulb. can smell it. You can smell it as soon as you put in it in. In the sofrito, 100%. yeah. You got it. I might, just to pick it up, I'll yep. sometimes add a bit of seasoning to yep. the sofrito. I know that's a little bit unorthodox, but that's how I roll. No, and, 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 and the thing is, you know, and people forget about cooking is that it, it becomes your your baby and your way of doing it you know what i mean yeah. yes we can teach you all of the basics and you, and you learn and you do a lot of different um structure and cooking is structure um but once you get it you just kind of take it and make it yeah, your own the rules right? are there to break 100 they are yeah and exactly. you steal everything <laughs> yes exactly there's not an original idea anymore okay so i'm mm -hmm. actually going to get my tomato paste in okay. there this is where we're going to get some of the body for the yep. bolognese tomato paste laced with cream as you can see yep <laughs> That's okay. Hey, yeah. I'll throw that in for you. Yeah, beauty. And all we're doing is cooking that out like yep. two minutes, three minutes. 100%. Get some of like the tinny flavor out of there, right. you know? Hey, you're not going to get me out of your kitchen, chef. No, that's okay, man. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, there's not many people that I look up to. <laughs> Stay and have a meal. <laughs> okay. Cool. So now um, a little bit of red wine? Yeah, yeah, we're doing Pinot Noir. Okay, uh, yeah, any any reason why you picked the Pinot Noir, or is it just... Just anything that's, uh, it's gotta be drier. It no, can't no, be no. super sweet, because yep, we're, gonna, gonna, we're gonna deglaze with yep. it, so we don't want it to burn. Yep. This one's a New World wine, I can tell that, because the grape yep. varietal's on the bottle. And we're just gonna start to pull this with the heat up. Yep. We don't really wanna like, hydrate this at any point. The idea is that this dehydrates while the wine gets into it. Okay, so now where we to go from here? I know you season it with a little bit of salt. Yeah, a little bit of salt just to help the process yep. along. I'm being really careful not to burn any of mm -hmm. this. And I'm even taking note to like the side of the pan yep. with the little fawn that is there. Yep. That's not so bad as long as we keep pulling it off. I'm okay. gonna reintroduce my meat now. Yep. 
And uh, really quickly, it's an important note, we've got our 35, like our heavy cream here. Mm -hmm. You want that to be the first liquid that goes in here. Right. Because uh, the fat helps absorb the, like, uh, the aromatics a little bit, but the protein will coagulate around the meat and stop it from, we're going to do a four hour cook here. Right? right. So you don't want this to braise and turn into, yep. into bait, like Gerber, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it'll keep the pieces kind of independent of themselves. So I'm going to put in quite a bit of cream here, but I really plan on taking this down a lot. Mm -hmm. And when, you, when he says taking it down, what it means is that he's going to take the water and the moisture out of the cream and you're just going to be left with the fat. We'll get some chicken stock in here. We yep. really want to showcase that because we yep. do make all of our chicken stock right. in Right, I house. just saw that. Just look at the, yeah, just how thick that is. Right? Oh yeah, that's and the way it's supposed to be, right, right. there. And it's not fat, it's gelatinous, <laughs> yep. right? We're not adding anything nope. we don't want. I'm nope. just going to thin this a little more than you'd want it because it's going to cook for so long, yep. right? I'm going to give it a taste. 100% I'm going to give it a taste. There's a little bit more paste going in there. But okay. Tell me what you think. Mm. Little bit have we, have one, we have one more component going mm -hmm. in here. Okay, well. what are we gonna put in there? We're gonna take this stock down just mm -hmm. another 30 seconds. Okay. Because I do want to fit more in this pan, but yep. I'll be able to if I don't. Okay. And we're gonna add just a bit of our house tomato sauce. Okay. Uh, blitz it up a little bit of garlic. Yep. A little bit of onion, nothing yep. fancy. Uh, fresh thyme, basil, yep. and oregano. Okay. I'm actually gonna get some more stock in there too, because I really want that to come down. Okay. And I'm gonna simmer it with some parm rinds as well. We like to simmer like a lot of prosciutto yep. ends, parm yes. rinds. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then it's a great way of, of using it up. So taking your parm rinds, um, you can either put it in a soup, you can put it in your sauce like this, and just let it cook out. It just adds that next depth of flavor. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to match. I haven't found another way to make that particular mm -hmm. flavor. No, yeah. I'm getting really hungry. Hey, tomatoes. That's the plan, man. This will also add a bit of that acidity that this mm -hmm. is lacking. I'm really gonna let it sit here. We can stir it as it comes down. Okay, perfect. In, in our rinds go. Yeah, and then we're gonna let go. this go. We're gonna come back. Oh, sorry, and one last, you can't okay. forget it. We're really heavy on the sage here. Okay, sage this is will a be good a slow thing. finish, yeah. Especially in the winter, like this is, we're coming into the fall season, winter season. Warm. Sage is one of those um, herbs that just, it just invites you and wraps you around. Yeah. You know, makes you like a, like a nice hoodie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're here with Riley, sitting in the dining room. What a cool inn. This is in at the Falls on Bracebridge. Um, this is your, your restaurant, and this is a, a great story because that sta the room's called The Stable, right? Yeah, it is called The Stable, and I got to correct you there. It's not quite my restaurant, but I definitely okay. feel like it is. I'm, very, uh, I'm here all the time, like yep. uh, mm -hmm. you know, any good manager would be, and I'm definitely pretty connected to this place. Mm -hmm. So what brought you back to Bracebridge? Uh, well, I spent a lot of time traveling throughout the country. Um, you know, I used to originally be a chef, and I spent a lot of time in Montreal and Toronto, and I just had enough of the city. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get out and, you know, be closer to the ingredients we were using and, you know, be able to just wake up and go canoeing or fishing. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that just has a really strong appeal to me. Amazing, amazing. So, in at the Falls. So, you have, of course, this restaurant, but how many rooms do we have here? Uh, there's about 20 rooms. Yeah, so upstairs above us, there's about 10 rooms. Mm -hmm. And then there's a separate building uh, just over that has another 10 Perfect. rooms. Perfect, I stayed in the other room. Yeah. Uh, beautiful, thank you. So uh, again, you can uh, host your weddings here, host special events here because you have a beautiful outside. Yeah, we have a beautiful patio that easily seats 100 people. We have a great deck. Uh, mm -hmm. We like to call it the courtyard. It overlooks the beautiful falls area. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a pretty nice spot for sure. We're definitely, uh, even though we're just getting to the event game, we definitely have a pretty strong demand right now. So three years ago, new owners, and you've, <laughs> just like anything, you peel back the layers, because this is a 200-year-old building, right? <laughs> yeah. It used to be owned by a judge? Uh, so originally, this was built by a judge, this okay. building. So he was a guy from Ireland. His name was Mahaffey, or his family's surname. And we're actually on Mahaffey Court right now. Okay. And the courthouse that he used to preside in is actually just across the street, and it's still in operations today. And he, you know, had original stone masons come in and build this building for him, and this is where him and his family presided. And then I believe in 1903 or 1906, uh, it then turned into an inn. And then since then, it's gone through lots of different uh, owners, and there's tons of history there. <laughs> we don't have enough time for that, but <laughs> check out Inn at the Falls in Bracebridge. Absolutely fantastic. Hey, look, chef's coming with dinner. This is going to be really great. Well, I'm pretty excited. All right, guys, here it is. Long time no see, buddy. Long time no see, yeah. 
This looks awesome. I don't think the portion is big enough. No, for the two of us, <laughs> maybe uh, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Okay, lamb bolognese. Oh. Or it's still that little bit of gaminess that I love from the lamb, you know? And then the richness, you know, as what Chef was putting in with the cream and then everything else, layered great, great flavor. Um, I apprenticed under an Italian chef. This would have this would have passed the test and then some. Great <laughs> oh, job. Nice. Check out Chef Chris and his great brigade here at In at the Falls. You will not be disappointed. Yo, check this out.